This is a quick overview of ETAP Grid, solution for analysis and operation of distribution power systems. ETAP Grid is used for the design and analysis of power distribution systems. It includes geospatial modeling and visualization integrated with network planning and optimization tools. It also includes a built-in overcurrent protection module, substation grounding, underground cable thermal analysis module, as well as distribution equipment uh, specific modeling. ETAP Grid includes various types of visualization of your electrical system data, including a substation view, a feeder schematic view, as well as a geographical view. What's unique about ETAP Grid is the substation view, feeder schematic views, and the geographical views are always synchronized. Let's take an example of a geospatial view. On this geospatial view, we can see that we have uh, a number of different layers, including primary distribution, as well as secondary distribution networks. They're essentially represented with different colors. The dark blue color represents the primary distribution layer, and the, the light bluish green color represents the secondary layer. If we zoom in and view the details of the substation, we can also select a, a specific feeder and allow the program to generate a schematic diagram. The view on the left hand side therefore is a feeder schematic view which is a logical representation of the geospatial feeder that we see on the right hand side. We can now switch over to analysis mode, in this case unbalanced power flow. Unbalanced power flow includes various capabilities such as selection of methodology, the ability to calculate AC and DC systems. You can also define different alert levels and thresholds such as critical and marginal alerts. And you can also choose to solve power flow for the entire system or you can solve power flow for partial system that is for selected feeders. Let's go ahead and solve the power, power flow for this entire system. The calculation results are displayed graphically on the geospatial as well as the feeder schematic diagram along with the calculation results and animation of the power flow in the system. A tabular view shows you loading violations per phase, voltage violations as well as uh, unbalanced factor violations. ETAP also includes an integrated unbalanced short circuit calculation engine. This short circuit program allows you to model three phase as well as unbalanced faults on a symmetrical as well as unsymmetrical network. You can also solve for ANSI as well as IEC device duties and report any duty violations. Let's take an example of unbalanced short circuit. The unbalanced short circuit study case allows you to define the standard ANSI versus IEC and also it allows you to define which component or bus or node is expected to be faulted for the purpose of analysis. You can choose between shunt faults as well as the fault types. The program also allows you to choose simultaneous faults. In this case we can see that we've chosen two buses to fault and when we run the calculation the program displays the results visually on the feeder schematic diagram as well as the geospatial diagram. We can see the flows on, on each branch and bus per phase. ETAP also includes an unbalanced load allocation calculation engine. This calculation allows you to utilize substation meters and combine them with customer load profiles. These customer load profiles are based on either typical profiles such as residential commercial, billing data, or AMI data coming from your smart meter. By allocating the substation meter down to individual customers, you can also get a report of technical as well as non-technical losses in your system. Let's take an example of load allocation for these two feeders. The view on the left hand side is once again our substation view where we can visualize the two meters within this single substation. You can choose to specify which measurements are to be included for load allocation purposes. Switch over to load allocation analysis mode. Select the method as well as the allocation method that's to be used for allocating the substation data to the individual loads. The allocation method also allows you to choose between online versus offline uh, analysis. 
The measurement data can be internal or based on external data. If you have AMI or billing data, you can easily export that into an Excel format and include it as part of the load allocation simulation. Once again, we can calculate the load allocation based on selected feeders or solve for the entire system. In this case, let's just go ahead and run the allocation for, for the entire system. And we can once again see the results visually on the schematic diagram, the geospatial diagram, as well as the uh, allocation alerts on the bottom. If we zoom into the sch schematic diagram, we can see that the substation meter data has been allocated down to every single load in the system. ETAP also includes time domain power flow. Time domain power flow or time series power flow is a unified AC and DC solution. It uses user-defined loading as well as generation profiles. You can also choose external data such as data from uh, Excel, which can be obtained from field measurements. You can also simulate events such as circuit breaker operation during the simulation period. The simulation period can be a single year or it can be multiple years for future planning. Once again, we switch over to time series power flow, open up our study case, and then we can define a sequence of events by specifying the date and time, and you can then specify the action. In this case, we're operating a, a specific circuit breaker. In the time domain loading page, you can choose the from and to simulation time, as well as the external data. You can also specify alerts and choose which components you would like to plot. In this case, we would like to go ahead and plot a few specific energy consumers so that we can visualize the data directly on the geospatial as well as the schematic diagram. The data for these consumers can be entered via external data or it can be entered via load profile. In the sector library you can define the single year or multi-year profile. The profile itself can be defined based on percent loading or based on percent generation. Once the load profile is defined you can choose whether you're using the profile library or you're using external Excel data. And you can also choose a composite sector. For multi-year analysis, you can also choose the growth curve. So once we run the calculation, we can see that the results have been generated and displayed directly on the geospatial diagram. And you can step through the time slider to see various power flow results as function of time. The alert viewer tells us which components have any voltage or loading violations. You can also choose to plot bus voltages, power flows, as well as cost using the ETAP plot manager. ETAP also includes a distribution reliability assessment program. Distribution reliability assessment calculates system as well as load side indices based on sustained or momentary faults. The program can consider multiple failure rates as well as outage or interruption costs. The outages or interruptions can be based on single or double contingencies. And the program is also able to give you a sensitivity ranking and plot that graphically for easy um, visualization. Let's take an example of reliability assessment. Once again, on the left hand side, I have the schematic diagram and on the right hand side, I have a geospatial representation of my feeder. Each component has reliability inf information specified such as the active and passive failure rates the mean repair rate, mean time to repair, mean time to failure, as well as the momentary rates. You can choose to enter this data manually or you can select the data from the library. You can also specify the reliability data for each load or each customer. For each customer, we can also associate it with the interruption cost. Inside the solution parameters, you can choose between single or double contingency. You can also specify the maximum momentary duration and specify which components you would like to plot, including the overall system reliability index. Once we run the calculation, you can see the results directly on the schematic diagram, such as the failure rate, the outage duration for every single individual bus, as well as the consumer. You can choose between display options and switch over to expected energy not supplied and the interruption cost. The output report gives you the overall indices such as KD, SAFE, E-COST and you can also bring up the plot for the overall system expected energy not supplied as well as the interruption cost. Here we can see the most sensitive element is transformer T2. In this chart we can see the total interruption cost and once again transformer T2 contributes to the maximum interruption cost. ETAB also includes an integrated protection and coordination program. The protection and coordination program 
is integrated with the relays such as overcurrent and thermal protection. You can quickly apply a sequence of uh, operation fault directly on the geospatial or schematic diagram and the program gives you an overall sequence of operation telling you right away the impact of the fault and which protected device will clear the fault for you. In addition to sequence of operation, the program also includes fault management and service restoration. When you apply a fault in the system, the program automatically determines which protected device needs to be opened in order to isolate the fault in the system. And it also gives you a restoration plan, letting you know which device needs to be operated in order to restore power to the affected customers. The program also includes volt bar optimization. Volt bar optimization allows you to compare power flow based on normal system operation, which is shown here on the left hand side, as well as give you the optimized results. Inside our study parameters, we can specify the objective. So I'm choosing conservative voltage reduction. You can choose the, volt, the, the controllable devices such as load tap changers and voltage regulators, switch capacitor banks, inverters from PV arrays, and then also specify the uh, alert limits and the CVR limits. In this case, it's 95%. So if I go ahead and run the volt bar optimization, we can see by comparing from the left and right hand side, I've actually reduced the voltage and satisfied the objective of CVR. If we zoom out, we can see the, the impact on the entire feeder. Finally, ETAP includes an integrated advanced distribution management system. ETAP ADMS includes network operation and optimization engines, management planning applications, network operations and control functions, various DNA applications or distribution network analysis applications, as well as integrated dispatcher or operator training simulator. Finally, ETAP Grid follows an established ETAP QA program. The ETAP QA program was established in 1991 and it follows certain core standards. These core standards apply to the verification and validation of the software. That includes interface, calculation engines, which use industry accepted equations. The calculation engines have been tested against software benchmarks, hand calculations, as well as field measurements and it also includes verified and validated engineering libraries. If you have any other questions or if you would like to get in touch with us, feel free to call or email us sales at etab.com. Thank you.